Sage Wanderer here, coming at you from my shotgun shack in the Texas Outback. So, um, my mom always told me, if you haven't got anything good to say, don't say anything at all. And I have just been going through a grumpy patch. Like, I don't have nothing good to say to any of all y'all. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> in fact, that sardonic laugh was the, the first laughter I've uttered in forever. You know, I've been locked down here on the, on the ranch, on the farm for, uh, I don't even know. It's 50, let's see, uh, 47 and 7 is uh, 54 days. 54 days. I, I made one quick trip into my post office box to get some, uh, you know, pick up my mail. And thank you for the for the food and the snacks that people sent me. Uh, some folks sent me some, some uh, uh, Slim Jims and some trail mix and, you know, some coffee and, Another, another folks sent me some seeds and some fishing lures, and some folks sent me some money, so thank you. I very much need that since I haven't worked at all through this, and I've just been uh, living off my ability to hunt and fish and raise uh, my garden and living off my stored food. But I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I had, had a couple of rough days. First of all, you guys may not know this, but um, I've been raising chickens. And I made my chicken coop out of Radar's old dog pen, and I made the pen house out of a bunch of scrap wood that I found. In fact, the timbers that make up the frame of the, of the little building I built is an old bed frame that my sister had thrown around on her place and she brought over and threw over the fence for me. And, um, but, you know, despite my best efforts, I lost a hen last night to some coon. It looks like it got its, it reached in through the wire and got a hold of one of my chickens by its neck and pulled its neck through the wire and mauled it up pretty good, and it was dead this morning. And um, day before yesterday, um, you may not know this, some of you do, that I have a 30-foot by 50-foot garden area with, uh, you know, dozens of plants now that are, some of them are knee-high. You know, and it's, my gardening's doing really well. Um, but um, I hand water all of it with a two-gallon pail, and I and I walk each each trip out to my garden is about um, about a hundred yards one way. So I walk two hundred yards to water with a two-gallon water jug. So it's about right now it's about six or seven trips. I'm running about fourteen gallons a day uh, that has to go from my rainwater collection system onto my garden. It hadn't rained in forever. I've been singing this song le lately. It's never gonna rain again. <laughs> I live in Texas. It's so dry here. Uh, make you miss Oregon. No, not really. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm here because as gripey as I've been, some folks would be in danger if I lived in one of those states where everybody was locked down and bullied by the police. Uh, I don't take the bullies. You guys know that. But day before yesterday, I was carrying my two-gallon water jug, and I tripped over and won a radar. That's my bullhound. I tripped over one of radar's chew sticks. Like he likes to get big old long sticks and lay on the front porch and chew them. And right there by the house, he'd he'd uh, been chewing on this stick, and it got tangled up in my feet, and I went down hard. I don't even remember the fall. I just remember the impact. You know, just like smack. It's like the hand of God smacked me down. And at first, <laughs> I thought I'd broken my hand. It's a uh, if you kind of can see the black and blue there of my hand where I fell. But um, my knee opened up from sea to shining sea. I don't think I need stitches. I think it's closed up pretty good. But it ripped my knee open and uh, messed me up bad, you know. But when you're the only one and, and you got chickens and dogs and plants relying on you, you know, you suck it up, buttercup, and you, you know, throw some... Uh, hydrogen peroxide on your wound and wrap it up and you head out back out again so I got hurt real bad um, I wish you could see it but I don't want to get up there and show you my old man legs but uh, yeah it's a mess it, I told my sister it looks like somebody chopped me in the knee with a sword that's how that's how bad it is and um, so all this has just kind of led to me one day after the next having bad days you know and even the, the day I fell down you know, I, I wrapped my knee up and kind of put my busted up arm under me. And with one hand, I continued watering my plants because if I don't water them, they die, right? There's no help there. <clears throat> and so um, about the third or fourth trip after I got injured, I was coming back around and I almost stepped on a copperhead. There's a big old copperhead. And I mean, it was a close call. I almost stepped on him. And I, 
you know, put down the can and ran in the house and got my shotgun and came, well, hobbled, limped into the house and got my shotgun and came back out. And this, um, and this, uh, copperhead got away, you know? So I guess I never realized how much of my joy kind of comes from interacting with other people. And I haven't been interacting because I, honestly, I'm just gripey. I've, I've just been gripey. <laughs> I'll just tell it like it is. And uh, I didn't want to offend and I didn't want to engage in interaction because I didn't want to, you know, go on a tirade or a tangent. And, um, you know, and I've been looking on the Internet. A lot of us are getting gripey. We've, we've had about enough of this lockdown. You know, that's part of it. And uh, but thankfully, I'm in Texas where the lockdown is is suggested. It's not mandatory. So I'm not getting bullied by the popo. But I am turning into Garfield there. Gripey old Garfield. But um, this morning, after two weeks of not even looking on my page at all or, or answering any emails or anything, um, I went on there and, and looked, and there was a woman who wanted to um, criticize me for the way I pronounce um, octagonal. And she says, it's octagonal, not octagonal. And I just let her have it <laughs> in the comments section. I was like, hey, has anybody ever said thanks for correcting my speech? No, because that kind of thing is about as offensive as bad breath. Honestly, I'd rather smell someone's B.O. than have them correct my diction, especially foreigners and Yankees. <laughs> we down here in Texas have a way of saying things, and if you don't like it, well, you can kiss our rebel. You know what I mean? <laughs> it feels good to laugh. You know, sometimes you just got to let it out. And I felt so good letting that woman have it. <laughs> <laughs> right between the eyes. <laughs> I guess I'm a bad person. I don't know. Maybe it was just any interaction is better than no interaction at all. But it was a bit of a release, and it kind of inspired me to just go ahead and be the gripey old man. You know, Get off my lawn! And, um, you know, and let my voice be heard. Um, but there's a lot of infighting going on with everyone over this lockdown and the virus. I'm glad to see the narrative has gone from whether it's real or fake, to whether we should be locked down or not. Because here's the bottom line, and this is, I was talking to Vinny, I don't know, about a week ago. Vinny calls me every once in a while. We talk on the phone for an hour sometimes. Um, he and I need to, we need to find a way to broadcast or capture on video our conversations because they're quite fruitful. But, you know, he was going about red-pilling people and trying to, he calls it red-pilling them, but, you know, trying to go around and talk about how the virus is, uh, you know, a hoax or it's fake or whatever. And I already had a blow up about that last time I was on here. But, um, cause I think it's very real, right? I think it's definitely overblown and there's no doubt about it. Here's what we can agree on. I think here's what we can all, uh, all of us conservatives and patriots can agree to that. Um, the government is overstepping their authority these governors do not have the constitutional authority to circumvent the Constitution. You know, they no governor has the right to shut down any church ever for any reason, period. End of discussion. They just don't have the right. The church is meant to be completely separate from the state, completely autonomous, and, you know, they do not have the right to come in and shut the churches down unless they're committing some crime like child abuse or something like that. And even then, you don't set the church down, you just arrest the people that are doing the bad thing and you leave the church the church body and the building alone. I mean, this stuff that, you know, they're doing in New York where they're threatening to shut down churches and synagogues forever because they're not complying. And one of my favorite YouTube channels, uh, YouTube channels is Johnny B. He's a gun guy. Appalachian redheaded and Irish looking guy. Funny. I love his intro music. The whole, the whole, I just, I like watching his channel, you know. And he just did an unsubscribe video. You don't like it? Unsubscribe. <laughs> he was much nicer than me. I yell at the channel. I yell at the at the video and, and you know invite you to unsubscribe. But that's the first time I've ever seen him get combative. And it's because he got real upset over this video coming out of Calumet County, Wisconsin. Now let's talk about Calumet County. If you've ever seen the video uh, on YouTube, the series on YouTube, uh, it's on Netflix actually, not YouTube. Uh, Netflix series called Making a Murderer, and 
the neighboring county, Winnicott County, Willicott County, and Calumet County, uh, Wisconsin, are, you know, they're, they're side by side. And when uh, accusations of police corruption, uh, you know, came at the people in Willicott County, they sent this case over to Calumet County. I'm probably saying the W County wrong. I just, it doesn't matter. Don't correct me! Blah! <laughs> But these Calumet, uh, Calumet County, in my opinion, uh, you know, they railroaded uh, these guys for this murder they didn't commit, and they falsified evidence, and they misrepresented the truth, and and um, and that was in the DA's office there. So it doesn't surprise me that these Calumet County, uh, Wisconsin sheriffs are on YouTube accosting a woman for violating the government governor's order of social distancing by allowing her daughter to go over to a friend's house and play. She let her kid go over to her friend's house and play, and the police show up. The sheriff's department shows up, and they're bullying this woman, and she's, honestly, she's nicer than I would have been. I would have been, get the hell off my property! Sorry, don't mean to scream at you. I know how some of these sensitive folks are. But yeah, I mean, it's a good thing I live in Texas right now, and I know that's why God sent me back here. Because not because life is easier here. <laughs> life is pretty tough in Texas in the summertime. It's all snakes and fire ants and fleas and ticks. In fact, I picked a tick off my scrotum just yesterday. <laughs> TMI. But they believe in freedom here. And when they tried to shut our gun shops down in Parker County, the Parker County Sheriff went around and told them to reopen because in Parker County, guns are essential. And so, you know, I live in a place where freedom is is mostly respected, especially individual freedom, and there is no way in hell they're going to come out onto somebody's uh, to somebody's house in Texas and try to bully them because they're just going to open fire on them from the front porch. I mean, that's the kind of people that live in Texas. We're not going to take your crap. We have a constitution, and we're willing to fight and die to preserve it. But you know, so this lady in Calumet County, Wisconsin, took it better than I would have. Uh, but Johnny B, my buddy on the internet, you know, he went on there and talked about, called him jackbooted thugs and everything. And he got a backlash. He, according to Johnny B, it was uh, 20% of uh, uh, his viewers, one in five, I think he said, of uh, the comments in his comment section were apologizing, you know, were, were uh, excusing rather the, the sheriff's uh, behavior saying, you know, they were just doing their jobs. They're just trying to save lives. I'm sorry. To hell with that. <laughs> that's BS on the highest level. You know, that's what com I mean, that's what a Nazi uh, death camp guard said when they marched Jews off to the concentration camps. They said, we're just doing our job. OK, well, that was found to be uh, not a viable excuse. And they were prosecuted for just doing their job. OK, so, you know, these law enforcement officials that are shutting down churches that are you know, accosting people on public beaches that are going door to door looking for uh, people that are violating social distancing. You know, the next thing they're going to say is, you know, you can't go over to your girlfriend's house and uh, and fool around because, uh, you know, that's violating social distancing. <laughs> you know, they're going to come in your bedroom and next and go, hey, you and you, your wife, you're getting a little too close. You, you can't open mouth kiss like that. You're going to transfer the virus. I mean, it's beyond ridiculous. It's uh, start a revolution. Let's go to war against the against the the uh, you know the jackbooted thugs kind of time here. I mean, it really is time to just to, to say no in a way to where if they don't like it, they can come for you. And if they come for you, well, they better bring lots of folks and lots of ammo and some body bags. That's where we're at here. the The Constitution uh, gives us rights. This virus is not as deadly as they they first thought it was. All of the projected models were wrong. I don't believe the virus is a hoax. I believe the reaction to the virus is an overstep of authority. And let me share something with you. I wish I could remember where the quote came from. But there's a quote that's been around for a long time that says, No one that seizes power ever intends to release it. So there is no, let's seize power temporarily and then we'll give you your rights back. That's never how that works. That never works that way. This governor in Michigan, this crazy, cow-eyed, nutjob woman in Michigan is out of her ever-loving mind. She's drunk with authority, and now she's calling people racist who just want their freedom back. The thing is, when people take your freedom away, they never give it back. 
And the only way to get your freedom back is through blood. Blood will have to run on the ground before you'll get your freedom back. That's just all there is to it. You think that, uh, that African Americans won their freedom without bloodshed? Blood had to run in the streets before they got their freedom. You know, to get their full freedom in the civil rights movement, do you think there was no blood then? No. Ask the people in Selma if there was any blood. The only way to get back your freedom from a tyrant is to take it back by force. And, you know, you can demand it back and they're going to bully you. And when they bully you, you stand up for yourself. And when they bring deadly force, you bring it in return. And that's the only way we're going to get the freedom back. I mean, we're going to have to take to the streets and take it back. And, um, you know, the fact is in Texas, there's just not a lot of that going on. Or I'd probably already be an activist just because I'm, I'm griping and mad enough to do something about it. But here, it's hard to go after somebody who's on your side. <laughs> you know, our, our Parker County sheriffs here are just like us. They're on our side. And I haven't seen them bullying anybody. But if I were in Calumet County right now, if I were in some of these places like in California, uh, where they're, I mean, it's just ridiculous it, what's happening in some of these states like Michigan. Um, <clears throat> this virus has peaked and it's doing this. And, you know, the numbers don't lie. It's peaked, it leveled out, and it's doing this. Just like I said it would, it's going to uh, peak in the spring, die back in the summer, and probably come back in the fall for a second act. But the bottom line is um, they're using it as an excuse to take away your freedoms. They're using it as an excuse to claim tyrannical power for themselves. And I, when I'm talking about they, I mean specifically the governors. The governors of these states need to be recalled. And the jackbooted thugs that are supporting them need to be dealt with. Read into that however you want to read into it. If I were a, a cop in one of these states and I was being asked to do my job, I would resign. I would refuse to do my job and make them fire me. Right? I would sabotage them from the inside and prevent them from doing their job, the rest of them. Uh, I would file lawsuits against the, the governor for forcing me, trying to force me to violate people's constitutional rights. You know, any judge that says the governor has the right to do the things that they're doing in these states where they're locking people down saying you can't go to work, you can't open a business, you can't have your kids, friends over to your house, you can't have a barbecue in your own backyard. That's bull. That's total bull. Telling people they can't have a barbecue or a birthday party or they can't have a funeral for their dead relative. Anybody that says that you can't do that is a tyrant and they need to be dealt with like we deal with tyrants in America. Uh, what did John Wilkes Booth say when he dived off of the balcony in Ford's Theater? Look that one up if you don't know. Uh, well, to tyrants, what is always to tyrants? We deal with tyrants the way we've always dealt with tyrants, and there's no soft way to deal with them. Once they take your freedom, once they grab hold of power, they're not going to ever give it up. You have to take it by force. Now, could we use the force of the ballot? Potentially. But are we really even having uh, legitimate elections these days? I mean, they've moved away from coming in person to, ba uh, to vote to uh, doing ballots by mail, which are so easy to fraudulently, fraudulently do. And, and people who say, oh, Sage, there's no evidence of, of uh, fraudulent voting practices with written ballots. Bulloni, because in Oregon, it's all written ballots. You don't go and vote in Oregon and you haven't. They mail you a ballot, you fill it out, you drop it off, right? And they found out in the 20, uh, 2018 election when I was living there that uh, – Activists, left-wing, uh, progressive, Antifa-type activists were going out and stealing the ballots out of people's mailboxes and filling them out and mailing them in for their candidate. And, um, you know, ballot theft out of the mailbox is the easiest way to sway an election. Um, so, you know, this moving away from voting in person, and uh, I, I've always said blue thumb vote. You come in. You cast your ballot, you dip your thumb in blue ink, and it stays that way so nobody gets to vote twice. Uh, people need to show ID if they're going to vote. 
you know, to prove that you're a citizen of this country and have the right to vote here. And um, but so the power of the ballot is not very powerful anymore. <clears throat> and ultimately, things like constitutional rights aren't up for debate, nor are they up for voting. And, you know, there's only one way to ensure constitutional rights, and that's through the use of force. What keeps somebody from coming in my house and holding me down and raping me and brutalizing me and taking my stuff? What keeps them from doing that? My 90-pound dog on the front porch and my AK-47. That's what stops them from doing that. It's the only thing that stops them from doing it. If they didn't have the fear of being dealt with with deadly force, they would just come into whoever's house they wanted to and do whatever they wanted to because that's what evil people do. So... If there's one thing we can all agree on is that the lockdown needs to end. It needs to end nationwide. We need to have the Supreme Court rule on whether governors have the right to keep healthy people locked in their homes. See, they call it a quarantine, but that's not what quarantines are. Quarantines are where you take sick people and make them stay in the hospital or stay home so they don't make healthy people sick. You know what they call it when you take healthy people? And lock them down into their homes when they've done nothing and they've broken no laws and they've violated no one else's rights. You know what they call that? They call that tyranny. So I'm in uh, solidarity with Johnny B. Hats off to you, Johnny B. Those people that are uh, uh, deciding to unsubscribe from your channel were never on your side to begin with. They are, what does he call them? Boot licking walnuts. Not sure what that really means, but hey. <laughs> Each his own. I'm not going to criticize this. It's kind of funny. Though. So, you know, if you think the cops are just doing their jobs, you're a boot-licking walnut. And uh, you can unsubscribe from this channel as well. Because freedoms are non-negotiable. They aren't issued by the state, so they can't be taken away by the state. They're issued by God, and only God can take away my constitutionally protected rights. My God-given rights, only God can take away. And uh, if you think different, well, feel free to unsubscribe because you're no patriot. You're a boot-licking walnut. God save our republic.